Happy New Year everyone, I hope you had a wonderful Christmas and wishing you all a very prosperous 2019. So to kick us off then into 2019 I've got a tutorial for you on this bib style necklace. Now most of the supplies have come from bbcraft.com if you remember from my last video I did a review on some goodies that uh, bbcraft sent to me. So this is what we're going to be making, a bib style necklace. There we go. You can see I've used a chain from them, the beads, the cording. So without further ado then, I'm going to take this away and we'll have a look at the goodies that we need to make this beautiful bib style necklace. Look at that, really nice. Autumny colours coming into spring, maybe. Look at that, beautiful. So let's have a look. Oh, yeah, before we go any further, we can see that I've used a lobster clasp that was also from the goodies they sent me. I will go through the ingredients list, the recipe, whatever you want to call it, of um, items you'll need to create this beautiful bib style necklace okay so move that away then and bring in this okay so you will need let's move these out the way a minute you will need some chain now the chain they sent me came on a roll like this and all I've done is measured off using a ruler or other, some other measuring implement, maybe a tape measure, whatever you've got to hand. Um, I used a ruler for mine and I measured off one piece measuring five inches using my cutters to cut the chain. A piece at five inches, a piece at six inches and a piece at uh, seven inches so here's all the chain that you will need you will also need to cut yourself a small piece about two inches long for the extender which is on the back of the necklace and in the kit that they sent me, in the box of goodies that they sent me, they sent me this wonderful box which has jump rings in, lobster clasps, the little dangly bits that go on the end of your extender. Um, and this wonderful little ingenious little um, jump ring opener. I won't be using that today. Because I haven't got that many jump rings to open. You will also need the jump rings. Now I am using the very small ones. I think they're about four mil, um, six mil, and eight mil jump rings. But if you haven't got all these different sizes, just use what you have got. Remember, this is just a guideline in my tutorial. You don't have to use the exact same uh, items. Okay. You will also need some clothes jump rings, or what I have got here are some nice little accessories, um, and the words believe are on here. Okay. But just use what you've got if you've just got small clothes jump rings use those but they need to be able to carry your cord and um, without looking that the the too big for it okay is what I'm trying to say you need to be able to get your cord through the clothes jump ring you will also need 
some cord ends. Now I am using these ones today, the large ones measure approximately, let's have a look, half an inch. Okay, so mine are just over half an inch. Let's have a look on the centimetre side. They are one and a half centimetres in length. But you can also use, if you don't have those, but you have some of the small ones, you can use um, the smaller ones and then link them together with a bigger jump ring to make it fit. If you don't have them type, but you have these type of cord ends, you can also use those as well. Like I say, extending it with some jump rings um, to bring it all together at the end. You will also need some head pins. Now, I've got or had quite a few of these little head pins and these are just enough to fit through the bead and so you can turn a loop and my head pins have got a ball on the end I just think that they make the project look that little bit more special but if you haven't got the rounded the round end um, head pins then use ordinary head pins the flat head head pins okay but I'm using these ones today and of course you need beads. Now, again, these are the beads that were sent to me by BB Craft. And the ones, the colours I used in this one, in the example, are the warm tones. Okay, but they did also send me some of these ones, um, the glass pearls. And I've used an array of those mixed in with the warmer tones today. These have what I've made and I've already made quite a few up, but don't worry, I will show you how to do this, okay? So I have already, otherwise the video would be so long and boring because it does take a while to um, get these beads ready. So make sure you get yourself comfortable before you start. Okay, so let's move them out of the way. You will also need for the project your tools, tools of the trade. You will need, like I've already said, a ruler or a measuring implement to measure your chain and to measure your cord. Now your cord needs to be 14 inches. Each one needs to be 14 inches and you need to have two of them. Okay. So each cord needs to be 14 inches. Do not worry, I will put everything, <coughs> excuse me, everything down in the description bar of everything that you need. Okay, and lengths. But you will need two cord lengths of 14 inches each. Okay. Okay, then tools that we will need are some wire cutters, some round nose pliers and your snipe nose pliers and your flat pliers, all jewellery pliers. Don't try using your hobby's, um, or what you call them, pliers. Don't try using your hobby's pliers because they've got teeth in here and it will gnarl and upset you and you'll you'll not be happy so if you haven't got any jewelry pliers get yourself out and get some they are quite cheap on the internet but these ones i got were from beadsmith i think oh no sanctuary beads do beg your pardon sanctuary beads and it was a nice set i've had them for a number of years and i probably am in the market to get some new ones <laughs> But there you go. Oh, and you will need a pair of scissors to cut your cord unless your cutters will go through your cord. And then you don't need any scissors. Okay then, so 
let's put all these items away and let's make this project together. Okay, so let's move those out of the way. Now, the first thing I did when I started this project was cut myself my chain. So that is the very first thing that I did. Having done that, we'll put them away up there. Oh yes, I can't remember if I remember to tell you, you also need a lobster clasp, okay, to enable us to close off our necklace with our extender chain, okay. Right, and there's our little extender chain already cut. So we're all ready to rock and roll. So the first thing to do then is get yourself a cup of tea, put some music on or a film on or some other, you can even watch some back videos of me beading and talking nonsense to keep you amused. <laughs> so the first thing we need to do then is get a selection of beads. Like I've already said, I made these prior, otherwise I will be here all day. So there's my so far selection of um, beads I'm going to use in, in this necklace because I don't obviously want the same colours because I'd have two the same. But I might give a, do a little giveaway, we'll see. Anyway, so them are the ones I've chosen to do this time. Those are the ones I did last time. The selection, all the beads, because they're in the box, they all go together really, really well. So you haven't got to worry about mixing and matching the beads. So for this, you will need a bead, a head pin. For me, I'm using the ball head pin. I will need my round nose pliers and I will need my snipe nose pliers and my cutters. Okay, so start off then by threading your bead onto your head pin. Taking your round nose pliers, take it right to the beat, the beat, the base of your bead. Okay, about, I don't know, about a small way up in measurement wise, a few mil up your pliers and you need to be turning these loops more or less the same. I've turned so many now on this that I know but if you're unsure you can get a marker pen and mark your pliers so you know exactly where to place your head pin. Okay, simply push the head pin back away from you, turn your pliers 90 degrees, so it is like that, okay. and then bringing your head pin to the back, then straight over the top, turning your pliers and pushing the head pin round to the side. Okay. Swapping hands into your less dominant hand. Okay. Take your snipe nose pliers, and this is where the fun starts. Grabbing hold of the tip of your head pin. Grab it and take it round to the back, grab it again, bring it round, Ooh. and down. Now there is a little bit left. Now if you're lucky enough, you can, using your pliers, sweep that wire around and get it to tuck away. But sometimes there's like a little end there. I hope the camera can pick it up. So to get rid of that end, we're going to take our 
cutters and getting using the tip and getting really in close not too close that you cut through your and do what I've just done that is not what you do see I was in too close and completely took my loop off so not a problem it happens <sighs> you've got to laugh we'll do it again so putting our bead onto our head pin taking our round nose pliers to your mark if you've already marked it push the head pin back to 90 degrees hold your bead turn your pliers 90 degrees Take your head pin, push it up flat, push it all the way over the top, move our pliers to the top, so it's just a hand motion, push the head pin round to the side and to the back, swapping dominant hands. Taking our flat nose, our snipe nose pliers, grabbing hold of the tip of the head pin, and wrapping our head pin around. Okay, squash it around if you're lucky, you can get it all the way around because these are short. Um, head pins. You might like to try this using the longer ones. It gives you more of a leverage to go round. I'm just using these up because they're what I've got. Yours might not be the same. Okay. Take it off. Take hold of our cutters. Not doing what I just did and cutting through the whole of the head pin. Get as close as you can, and that's what should happen. So you end up with a head pin with a turned loop. And just to make it secure, because we don't want it scratching or catching on anything, just give it a little squeeze with our snipe nose pliers. Okay. Now, I don't know the exact number that we need, but make yourself a pile, like I say, get yourself comfortable. Make yourself a nice pile, mixing the colours nicely. Okay. Do you want me to do that again for you, just to see, just to show you? So I'll just get another bead out here. We'll get a nice movie colour one. Okay, we'll grab a head pin, put the head pin through the bead, get in our round nose pliers, holding it as close to the bead as we possibly can, on our mark if we've marked them, pushing the head pin back away from you. Turning our pliers 90 degrees up to the top. Push the head pin flat so it's flat. And then straight over the top. Holding our bead securely. Turn your pliers so it's just a hand movement to the top. and push that head pin round to the side. Changing over to our less dominant hand, taking our snipe nose pliers, 
grab the end of the head pin and wrap it round. Now I appreciate this can be tricky, especially when if you're using small head pins like I am. But like I say, I just want to use these up. Okay, take it off the pliers. Taking our cutters, Ooh. and then just as close as you can, not cutting through the head pin, <laughs> just off the tail, snip it off, get your little pliers and give it a squeeze because we just want to make sure it doesn't catch on anything, no clothing or skin. And there we have another one. Okay guys, so I'll leave you to make yourself a nice little pile. And don't worry if you haven't got enough, you can just make some more when we come into placing them onto the chain. Okay, so I'll pause you there let you carry on making some of these lovely beads and I will catch you in a moment. Right, so you've made yourself a nice pile of beads. What's the next stage? So the next stage is then that we're going to attach them onto our chain. So we'll pick up our smallest piece, which is a five inch chain, lay it nice and flat. How do we get these babies onto here? Right, the answer is with our little jump rings. Now, if you haven't got four mil, use five mil. Don't fret about it, it's absolutely fine. So we need a pile of these. Now, how do we get them onto this chain? Now, you need to make sure that your chain is flat. Now, this does get a little bit fiddly and it is, again, a little bit time consuming, but well worth it, I think, when you look at the necklace. So, my plan is you will need to open and close your jump rings, the flat head ones and your snipe ones. Okay, so let's dive in. So to open and close a jump ring you always open and close a jump ring from front to back okay never that way always that way okay now to get the right measurement what i do on my chain is i miss one put a bead on miss one put a bead on miss one put a bead on okay so there's no rhyme and reason to this you just pick up your bead, put the head, the head pin, put the jump ring through the loop of your head pin that you have made. Okay. Come down to your chain, going through the back of your chain. Close your jump ring. Now always make sure that the jump ring is absolutely properly closed, otherwise all your beads will fall off and that is not what we want and it's not good. So first one on. Lay your chain back down because it always needs to be flat otherwise it'll be all over the show. So make sure that we've got it on right. Grab the end of our chain, perfect. Make sure the chain's not twisted. And that it's sitting in the right place. Now then, that's got itself stuck behind there. Bear with me. I'll sort it out at the end. See, it'd be easy. 
on to the next one then so picking up a jump ring opening our jump ring from front to back not that way pick up a different bead this time I'm picking up a glass one going through our little loop we've made missing a bring you in a little bit I think Miss a link and go into the next link, lifting it up, closing our, sorry, closing our jump ring off, give it a squeeze, and now we've got two on. Lay our chain down because we always want to be putting on the right way. Pick up a jump ring. I'll try being shot this time, guys. Sorry. It's really difficult, you know. Opening our jump ring. Picking up this one. Missing a link. Going through a link. Close our jump ring off. Give it a squeeze. Make sure that it's closed and flat. Okay, so this is all there is to it now. Always making sure that it is flat and the right way up. I'll do one more with you. Pick up a jump ring, open a jump ring front to back, pick up a bead, going through the loop that we've made with love, miss a link, into the chain, scooping it up, Making sure our jump ring's nice and closed. And down it goes. Okay. So you need to do this alternating. Miss a chain. Oh, miss a chain. Miss a link on one. Miss a link on one. So on and so forth. Just randomly pick up your beads. If you're a bit OCD and you want to do a pretty pattern, then that's fair enough. Other than that, just pick up your beads through your jump ring onto your chain. And you need to do that for all three lengths. Okay, guys, so we've got a bit of um, putting on to do. Let's get on with that and we'll be right back. So we're back then and we've put all our beautiful little beads onto our chain and I've got all these ones over. So another project to be made there, maybe a tassel. I love tassels. Right, anyway, moving on then to get this um, necklace completed. So now we move on to our six mil um, jump rings. Taking one, open it as always, front to back. Take the larger chain and the middle chain together at one side and closing that jump ring nice and securely. Okay, and the same to go around the other side. Let's pop this over a bit. Okay. 
So one side and the other side. I'm closing the jump ring. to be a very good jump ring. Closing it nice and securely. Okay, so now we have This. And then we need to attach a jump ring at the top here. We'll do this bit first. Okay. So taking another jump ring of the six mil size. Opening our jump ring, going through the jump ring that we connected the bottom to, or the middle and the bottom, and going through the chain on the shortest chain. And the same on the other side. Is where your necklace now starts to come together. <clears throat> so onto the jump ring and then through the chain. Enclosing our jump ring. Okay. So now we have the bevel sorted. There we go. Okay, so now it's time to bring in our closed jump rings and our cording. So we've measured off then two 14 inch pieces of cord and it's just a case of finding the middle. So bring your cord ends together run it down to the middle, pop it through the ring, your closed jump ring, okay, pulling the loop through and then passing two ends through the loop, okay, <coughs> excuse me, and pull. And I've done that the wrong way. So, scrap that. Because I want the um, fold over part, I want this part to be seen. It will be that way or that way. I want the top side to be seen. So if you pop it through the wrong way, don't worry. Just do it again. So, popping our loop through the wordy part mean on yours if yours hasn't got any writing on it then it won't really matter pop your ends through the loop pull and wiggle it down see what I mean I want mine to be like that on the outside it tight making sure our ends are still level okay and we're going to do the same with the other one so pulling our ends together <clears throat> bringing our fingers down popping the loop through the ring Pop 
popping the ends through the loop and pulling making sure that the aisle ends are still level if they do get unlevel like mine just wiggle it down and you can still cut V to get them ends nice and level okay now before I attach these to the necklace what I'm going to do is put the ends on so if you have a one and a half centimeter cord end that's great all you need to do is pop your cord ends in. There's my get your larger flat nose pliers. And you want to space these quite well. In and squeeze. Squeezing the ends nice and tight where your cord is. Using the flat of your pliers <clears throat> and squeeze where the teeth are. That just ensures that it's got a nice grip. <clears throat> and do the same with the other side. If you haven't got these and you need to be using these smaller ones, that's fine. Just put one on either side. Okay. But as you know, I have my wider ones. Ooh. Nice tight squeeze on the ends and down the middle over the teeth. Okay, and what we'll do as well is we'll finish off our um endings and put our clasp on. So first of all then I'm going to do my little extender chain. So I've got a small jump ring. This is a 4mm but a 5mm is absolutely fine. Open up our jump ring. Put it on the end of our chain along with our little drop. If you haven't got one of these, don't worry about it. You can maybe put a pearl on. It doesn't really matter. Close our jump ring off. Okay. Now to attach it to our end, another bigger jump ring, 6mm jump ring or 5 whatever you've got, I'm using 6, <coughs> attached to our chain and attached to one of our ends. Okay. If it is that you haven't got the larger ones and you need to um use these small ones then you would put a jump ring on each one because you'd have two and then jump ring in the middle to join them and then put your extender chain on there okay so that's one part of our necklace done And we'll do the other part just while we're here. We'll put the lobster clasp on. So now we need to put the lobster clasp end on here. So open and close our jump ring. Attach to our cord end. Again, if you're using the smaller ones, then you would put one on each side and then join them in the middle. 
Now to put our lobster clasp on, we attach another jump ring through the jump ring we've already added. It just allows the lobster clasp then to be able to move. Attach our lobster clasp on and close our jump ring. Okay. So now we have our two ends. Right, so oh, one over here and one over here. So straightening out <coughs> our bib, finding where the top jump ring is on each, lay it down. <coughs> right, now here we go on to the large jump rings. These are, I believe, 8mm. And we want two on each side. So open the jump ring, going through the jump ring on the top of our bib and onto our um, closed jump ring. Close it off. And just for added security, I'm going to put two on. So, opening our jump ring. Again, going through the jump ring at the bottom and through <coughs> our closed jump ring. ensuring it's closed. It just for me it just gives not only aesthetically it looks nice with the two but it just gives me a bit of peace of mind as well. What's going on with that jump ring? And when you're putting your stuff together as well just give things a yeah, once over. Right, and the same again. So, two of the bigger jump rings. <coughs> Opening, closing, through, jumping at the top, and through the closed jump ring. Closing it off. <coughs> I've got a bit of a cough today, guys. Okay, and again through the jump ring, through the closed jump ring. Thread security. Give yourselves <coughs> a pat on the back. You have made yourself a lovely bib necklace with the lobster clasp, an extender so you can lower it down as low as you want. But there we have, oh, I really love this colour, I love how this has come together. Thank you BB Craft, I've really enjoyed <clears throat> making my first tutorial using these goodies. So, oh, it's just, I can't explain it to you, it it feels so nice, it isn't heavy, it isn't heavy. It'll look absolutely gorgeous with whatever you choose to wear. Obviously, you need an open neck um, top to wear it. What's going on here? Better. It's all trussed up. Trussed up. Right, there you go then, guys. Happy New Year to you. The first of many tutorials, I hope. 
and um, there will be another tutorial using the bb craft items that they have sent me um, as you as i've already said the items from bb craft used in this tutorial was the cord the chain the lobster clasp the little dangly bit um, the beads my own head pins my own um believe closed jump rings and uh, yeah closed jump rings and bb crafts jump rings <coughs> i will as i've said be putting all items used into the description box below the video please do go over and give bb craft a look the cord that i used in this project in this tutorial came off this beautiful mink roll the one that i used in the showpiece to show you what we'll be making today came off this gorgeous deep russet um spool you do get six in a pack from bb craft and those are the colors that i chose to use there's lots and lots of different things you could be making with these some nice wrap bracelets would be good ankle bracelets would be nice just plain ones with a few dangly bits on oh that might be a hmm, tutorial coming up who knows so if you'd like to see further tutorials from myself please do hit the subscribe button i'd love to have you along and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of any up and coming videos that i may have please do press like if you've enjoyed the video obviously don't press like if you didn't enjoy the video but hey press like give us a thumbs up <clears throat> please do leave a comment i love to read your comments um I love the positive comments. Yes, I know I'm not everybody's cup of tea and that's absolutely fine. But there's no need to be nasty about it, is there? You know, you can just not bother to comment at all. If you don't like me, it's not a problem. I might not like you either. <laughs> there you go then, guys. So, uh, happy, happy, happy New Year to you. And a very, very prosperous New Year. I hope 2019 brings you everything that you've ever wished for. For me, it's to be able to do more tutorials. So, fingers crossed, you're going to see more of me. Yay! Or nay, as the case may be. Anyway. Oh, it's so nice. Anyway, um, thanks, guys. And I'll see you again soon. Take care, then. Bye. I see those thumbs. Thumbs, thumbs.